Okay, here we have, um, let me share my video. Okay, there we go. So here we have 8.6, which is the double angle and the half angle formula. And so they're just going over the sum and difference formulas, and then they're going to use these to establish the double and the half angle. So for the double angles, um, basically two theta is the same as theta plus theta. You use the formula, you notice that this is the same as that. So we combine the like terms, you get two sine theta, cosine theta. For cosine of two theta, again, two theta is the same as theta plus theta. Um, so you use that formula and then you realize this is cosine squared minus sine squared. Not to be confused with the identity, which is sine squared plus cosine squared. Um, and then here you can also rewrite this in two different ways, depending on how you apply the Pythagorean identity. So instead of writing cosine squared theta, I can write one minus sine squared theta using the Pythagorean identity. Combine these two like terms, I end up with one minus two sine squared theta. Or I could replace the sine squared theta with one minus cosine squared theta. But because I'm subtracting sine squared theta, when I use this substitution, I have to distribute that negative, which makes it negative one and a positive cosine squared. Combine my like terms, I get two cosine squared theta minus one. So now we've developed those um, double angles, and there they are. And then um, similarly, you can do the same thing for tangent, right? So you can do theta plus theta, use the tangent formula, and then combine your like terms at the top and multiply those together to get tan squared. Nothing new there. But let's see how the problems are going to be given to us. So they gave us cosine of an angle. They told us what quadrant it's in. It's in pi to three halves, which means it's in quadrant three. And they want us to find the exact value of two sine theta. Well, I know according to this form, this theorem that two sine of two theta is two sine theta cosine theta. So I know the cosine theta is negative two over five. They gave that to me. And two is just two, but I need to figure out what the sine is. So I came over here. Now I know that cosine is going to be x over r. So then that means the x value, the r has to be positive. So it has to be square root of five, which means it's the x value that is negative. So negative two. And it makes sense for the quadrant that I'm supposed to be in. I did the Pythagorean theorem and I figured out that y has to be the square root of 21. But because I'm in this quadrant, it has to be negative square root of 21. So when I go to do the sign, it's going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is negative square root of 21 over five. Or another way to think about it is the y value over the r. Same thing. So I multiplied all this together. 2 times negative square root of 21 times negative 2 is positive 4 square root of 21. 5 times 5 is 25. And I cannot reduce that anymore. So that's the answer. For this one, I have cosine of 2 theta. So um, I decided to use this formula, but I could have used any of the other formulas. Since I was given cosine, um, I didn't even need this triangle, to be honest. Instead of doing this formula, I could have instead, keep in mind what the answer was, negative 17 over 25. I'm going to leave that there. Because I was given cosine, I could have used a formula that just had cosine. So I could say that this is equal to 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. And then I could have plugged in the cosine value that I was given, which is negative 2 over 5, and squared it. And then I square it, I get 2 times 4 over 25. And then that would give me 8 over 25 minus 1. And guess what? 8 over 20. I did write 12. Weird. My brain just did something weird. Um, 8 over. 8 over 25 minus 1 is negative 17 over 25. So it really wouldn't have mattered which of these formulas you use, but because I was already given this cosine value and I do have a formula with just cosine, um, I can choose to use that one. Or if you go back in the video and you pause it before I erase it, um, when you use these two values and they use this triangle, you find the sine, you find the cosine, you plug in you square the cosine, you square the sine, and then you subtract, you get the same negative square, negative 17 over 25. So now they want us to go ahead and try to do the sine of 3 theta. Remember that's theta plus 2 theta. So you use the formula there, then you use the formula for the double angle, 
use the formula for this, because that's theta and theta, and then you use the formula for that, that's this. Um, and then you distribute this here, you get, um, I would have put sine theta, cosine squared theta, I'm not sure why I did it backwards, minus sine cubed now, because sine and sine squared. Here we get two sine theta, but now cosine squared. And then I combined my like terms actually, because you have cosine squared, sine, sine, cosine squared, same thing. But you've got one here, and then you've got two there. So that makes three sine cosine squared theta minus the sine cubed theta. I noticed that both of these have a sine. Actually, before that, I didn't even do that. What I did first was converted the cosine squared to sine. So everything is sine. So that became one minus sine squared theta, which is the Pythagorean identity, right? We know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. And if I minus sine squared theta on both sides, I get that cosine squared theta equals one minus sine squared theta. So that's all I did there was apply the manipulated um, Pythagorean identity. Then I distributed this and I got three sine theta and then three sine cubed theta. Here I have like terms, so I combine negative three and negative one, I got negative four sine cubed theta. Um, this is as far as I went with it, but you could have gone just a little bit further and factored out sine and just got three minus four sine squared theta. Um, that would have been acceptable too. Um, but I went ahead and stopped there. So, um, that's pretty much it. They just want us to rewrite them and then simplify it. Okay, so number 10 will ask you to do one. It might ask you to do cosine. So when you split it up, you're not going to use this formula. You're going to use the formula for cosine and then use the Pythagorean your Use your double angle identities for the two thetas first and then use your Pythagorean identities where you can use them. I don't want to do the problem for you um, because then that takes away from that problem and you figuring that problem out. Now, here's another one. So this one says, let's go ahead and try to use the double angle formula for sine and cosine to develop new formulas for cosine squared. So basically what they're doing is they're taking the double angle and then they're going to um, solve for the regular angle. So um, I think what I did was I added two sine squared to both sides, so I got it equal to one, then I minus the cosine over, and then I divided by two, so I ended up with this being the exact same thing as this, which is sine squared theta equals one minus cosine two theta over two. And then same thing here, add one to the other side, then divide by two, and now I have that cosine squared theta equals one plus cosine of two theta over two. And then similarly, I can write tangent squared as tangent, tangent, do my things here, squared, squared, write what I just got for sine squared, write what I just got for cosine squared, and then change this to the numerator times the reciprocal of the denominator. And then the two cancel and I end up with one minus cosine two theta over one plus cosine of two theta. So then they're saying let theta equal alpha over two. And now you have an expression that says sine squared of alpha over two equals this. Well, what is two times alpha over two? It's just alpha. So now you've established a half angle identity. Similarly, you can do the same with cosine. And similarly, you can do the same with tangent. So now we have these formulas. Now, if I just take the square root, I won't just know what sine squared of alpha over 2 is. I'll know what sine of alpha over 2 is. So, but remember, when you take the square root on both sides, you end up with plus or minus. And so you're not going to get two answers for these problems. You're only going to have one answer. So you're going to have to deduct which one is correct. Is the positive answer correct or is the negative answer correct? Okay, you will have to deduct that. So it says use a half angle formula to find the exact value of sine of 22.5 degrees. Now, I like to do this first 
So I know that they have it as part B, but I like to know whether I'm going to use plus or minus at the beginning. I don't like to wait and choose later. Okay, I like to just know at the beginning and then put the appropriate sign throughout my work. They do it backwards. I don't know why. So what I'm going to do here is um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at where this angle is and square. This is um, 90 degrees. So 22 degrees is going to be in the first quadrant. The y value in the first quadrant, and why am I talking about y? Because we're talking about sine. So the y value of that angle is going to be positive, which means I'm going to choose the positive square root value. So then this can be written as 45 degrees over 2. And why do I choose 45 degrees? So that way it is a value that is on my unit circle, right? And according to this formula, I should use plus or minus um, this formula. However, we already decided that we should use plus. So really, I don't need to have that. I know it should be plus if you do this part first, OK? So then cosine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. And um, there's many ways to get to this answer. What I did was is I took 1 divided by 2 and got 1 half. I took square root of 2 over 2 divided by 2, and I got square root of 2 over 4. Um, then I wrote that as one fraction. So I got a common denominator, and I wrote it like this. And then I did the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. And the square root of 4 is just 2. And so I ended up with this expression. Now, because we knew to take the positive, we know that this is the answer. Okay, and it just, it's there over there if you did it second. Okay, so um, same thing over here with example three, very, very similar. So it's asking us to find the cosine of five pi over 12. So I know that five pi over 12 is in quadrant one. If you don't know that, find out, right? If you don't know 5 pi over 12, what that looks like in degrees, then multiply it by 180 over pi. Oops, there. Delete pi. And I get that that's 75 degrees. And so I know that 75 degrees, this is 90 degrees. So 75 degrees has got to be in the first quadrant. And since I'm doing cosine, that's the x value. The x values in the first quadrant are positive. So I am going to use the positive root. Okay. Um, so then I'm going to take that formula up there for cosine and 5 over 2 is the same as 5 over 12, 5 pi over 12 is the same as 5 pi over 6 over 2, okay? Um, so then I know the values for this, so we're going to use the formula. So then my theta, my alpha here is going to be 5 pi over 6. So I applied my formula. I know this value is negative square root of 3 over 2 from the unit circle. Negative and a negative is positive. I did 1 over 2, square root of 3 over 2 over 2 to square root of 3 over 4. You could write them as a single fraction, but I noticed that the computer accepted this. So once you got rid of the complex fraction, the computer was fine with that. They didn't necessarily have to have a single fraction and all of that stuff um, and then take out the four that was in the denominator. So then it make me go that far. So I stopped here because the computer did accept this. Um, so then now let's look at example four. So for example four, it tells us tan of alpha is negative one fifth and the angle is between pi over two and pi, which means it's in this quadrant. And it wants me to find the exact value of sine of alpha over 2. Now, I did this on the side so I could know which um, square root to choose, right? So this angle is in the second quadrant. But this angle is in the first quadrant. How do I know that? Because if I take this that they gave me, pi over 2 less than alpha less than pi, and I want to know about pi alpha over 2, I just divide each of these by alpha, by 2. So I get alpha over 2 in the middle, and then pi over 2 divided by 2 is pi over 4, and then pi over 2 is just pi over 2. 
that means here's pi over uh, pi over four, and here's pi over, here's pi over four, the angle, right? That's pi over four, and this is pi over two. So in between pi over four and pi over two is the angle the alpha over two. That means I'm in quadrant one, okay? So if I'm in quadrant one, then when I go to try to find the sine of the half angle, I'm going to take the positive root. So my formula, I'm applying, I'm using this formula, but I'm using the positive root for that formula. Um, but I do need to figure out what the cosine of that angle is. And all I know is what the tangent is, okay? So I went ahead and did, I know that was in my second quadrant, this angle. So there it is, there's my angle. And so then I have tangent is opposite over adjacent or y over x. Um, and in this quadrant, the y value is positive and the x value is negative, which means that that negative belongs to the x. So it's one for y, negative five for x. Um, and then if I need to figure out what the radius is, I did the Pythagorean theorem, the Pythagorean identity. So I figured out that the radius was square root of six here. Okay. So then in order for me to find cosine of alpha, it's x over r or adjacent over hypotenuse. So I get this, and if I rationalize that, I get negative five square root of six over six. So I plugged it into the formula. Negative and a negative is positive. And then if I get rid of the double fraction, that's one over two, and this over two is five, five square root of six over 12. Um, there, part D, I did part A here, but then I also did part D right here. I should have done this down here. That's all that is. So it says use the cosine to find the sine. I already did it. I did it up in there. So it's already been done. Okay. Um, so then now we can also use the tangent alpha over two. So you've got two of them. You've got this one, and then you've got this one. You could use either one, whichever one you like, or whichever one seems more convenient. And so there were a couple of extra problems in the homework that I didn't quite address in this. Um, basic lecture. So I wanted to make sure that I included some examples of that in this video. So for number four, they gave us the cotangent, right? And they gave us the fact that secant is less than zero, which also means that cosine is less than zero. I wrote that over here, which means that your x value is less than zero, okay? And I know that my theta is between zero and two pi, so that's the entire unit circle, but with this restriction, okay? Now, um, here you're given the cotangent, and cotangent is negative 5 over 1. And since I know that the x value has to be negative, then that means the negative goes with the 5, which means that the y value has got to be a positive 1. So in what quadrant is the x value negative and the y value positive? That's in quadrant 2, okay? So I know that my angle is in quadrant 2. Now, in order for me to find all of these things, all of these formulas use sine and cosine. So I need to know the sine of this angle and I need to know the cosine of this angle. So the first thing I did was go over here and figure out what the radius is. I used the Pythagorean theorem and found out that the radius was the square root of 26. So the sine is this, the cosine is this. I could rationalize it if I want to, but I didn't in this case. As long as you rationalize your final answer, you should be okay. So sine of two theta, I used the formula, plugged in the sine theta, plugged in the cosine theta, multiplied all this out, got this, and then reduced. Done. Cosine of two theta is this formula, plugged in the cosine, plugged in the sine, squared them each, and then combined the like terms, and then reduced the fraction. Sine of theta over two, I used that formula, plugged in, um, the cosine there, and then started to simplify this. So negative and a negative is a positive. Um, I did one over two, five over two square root of 26. Um, and you could have left it like this, but I went ahead and got a common denominator. So I multiplied by square root of 26 over square root of 26. And that gave me the square root of 26 plus five over two square root of six. But this also would have been okay. And then finally for part D, we get cosine of theta over two. So we use that formula. It's the same formula, just instead of a minus, there's a plus, but a plus and a minus is a minus. 
And then similarly, the same thing is happening. So I get one half minus five over two squared six, get a common denominator, write it at one, write it as one fraction. Um, this over here, oh, this was talking about if I had chosen to use a calculator instead of the um, triangle. I suggest you use triangles. That's what trigonometry means is using the triangle. Um, but if you know cotangent is negative five, that's the same as saying that tangent of that angle equals the reciprocal, negative one fifth. And so then if I want to know what the angle is, I can do tan inverse of negative one fifth in my calculator. If I do that, um, I'm in radian mode, yep. So tan inverse of negative one over five, I get about, um, well, that's in radians. So let's go to degree because for some reason I use degree over here. I see the degree. So let's go back to that and hit enter. It's about 11.3 degrees. Now this is not within the bounds that they gave me, which was zero to two pi, okay, or zero to 360 degrees. So this value is not within that range. So I added um, 180. And why did I add 180? Because that's the period for pi. It repeats itself every pi units or every 180 degrees. So then I ended up with 167. And so then that is my angle. And then what is my, and that angle is in the second um, quadrant. Now pi theta over 2 would be for me to divide that by 2 and I get this angle. So that angle is less than 90 degrees, which means it would be in quadrant 1. And since um, this guy is going to be in quadrant one, then it means that I'm going to be using positive roots because in quadrant one, both sine and cosine are positive. So I do have to use the positive value for both, okay? So in another way of doing this, I did this the long way. The other way of doing that is how I did it in the lecture notes, is that if you know that theta is between zero and two pi, um, oh no, that doesn't help me. That's why I did it. Because all I know is this, and if I divide by two on both sides, I get that theta is between, theta over two is between zero and pi. But that still doesn't help me decide whether or not it's in quadrant one or quadrant two. So I had to go through this information to decide whether or not to be taking the positive or the negative square root. So definitely, definitely, um consider this information when you're doing this problem you know why i'm getting a real bad reflection okay so i had to think about all of this to figure out whether or not those square roots should be positive or whether those square roots should be negative so doing this didn't help me in this particular problem and so i had to go and actually find those values and i used the calculator to do it and i put it in degrees because it's real hard to tell when you get some weird decimal whether or not that's between um zero and pi over two or if that's between pi over two and pi or if that's between pi and three pi over two or three pi over two and two pi so i use the decimals which helped my brain um, figure out where i was in location on the unit circle okay and that's why i wanted to bring up that problem because it does have that weird situation and you need to be able to decipher which route to take um, okay, so here we have another one that's just asking us to evaluate the exact um, thing. So this is going to be in quadrant one. So I am going to take the positive root. So I get 150 over two. I use the positive root of 150. I know that value, the negative and the negative become a positive. I simplify this and I get this fraction there. Um, for secant, we know I can write this as 15 pi over four over two. I can write secant as one over cosine. Um, and then I can use the formula for the cosine of an angle over two. Again, we're in quadrant one, so the cosine is also positive in this quadrant. Um, and so then I'm going to be doing the positive root and I'm gonna have this. And so then that becomes, um, what on earth just happened here? Oh, this is bigger than two pi. 
if I'm talking about fourths, two pi is eight pi over four. So this is really big, okay? In order for me to use the unit circle, this value is not on my unit circle. So I have to subtract two pi from it to get another angle that's at the exact same location on the unit circle. And so I found out that that angle is actually seven pi over four. And so then I could take seven pi over four and figure out what that is. And seven cosine of seven pi over four, I didn't write it here, but cosine of seven pi over four is actually equal to square root of two over two. But square root of two over two has to be over two, which is the square root of two over four. And then I got a common denominator here by multiplying this by two and two. So two over four, square root of two over four. And then um, I did take the square root of both the numerator and the denominator. And then this is one over a fraction. So I just took the reciprocal. Um, as long as you get a fraction, it should accept that fraction. Um, it won't, you don't have to rationalize this denominator. And it's, it's pretty much impossible because you have a square root inside of a square root. So you can't just eliminate. Um, I mean, I guess you could. You would have to do two square root of two plus square root of two. So that down here, you could get two plus square root of two by itself. And then you would have to multiply by two minus square root of two over two minus square root of two. And then you'd have to FOIL that all out, figure out what that is, and then FOIL that out, figure out what that is, and keep going. But the computer did accept this, so I stopped there. I wasn't going to unnecessarily go any further. Um, and in the review of the test, or well, on the test specifically, there's multiple choices. So once you get an answer that looks like one of the choices, then you can stop, right? So another example that I saw in the homework was this one here, um, where the, um, there we go, let me see a little bit better. So where they had sine of a negative angle. So if I added two pi to this, I got 13. I think I actually had to add, no, that's wrong. No, yes, that's right. If I add two pi to this, I get 13 pi over 12, which can be written as 13 pi over six over two. And then I use the formula. But before I can decide whether it's going to be plus or minus in the front, I had to dig in a little bit, okay? So negative pi over 12 means I'm going in this direction. If it helps for you to put things into degrees, then do that. So let me make sure that my mode is in radians. That's the normal thing. Um, I can take 11 pi over 12 and multiply that by 180 over pi. And that tells me how many degrees I'm talking about. And remember, pi is 180 degrees. So if I'm going negative 165, I don't go all the way up to pi, I just go here. And that means it's in quadrant three. So when I add two pi to it, it's just gonna be in the exact same location. So that's also in quadrant three. And in quadrant three, the y value is negative, so sine is negative. And since that's what I'm trying to figure out is the sine, I know to take the negative root here. So then I find the cosine of 13 pi over 6, but that is actually too big. It's bigger than 2 pi, so I took out 2 pi and I got pi over 6, so I do put cosine of pi over 6, which is 33 over 2, and then I do 1 over 2, this over 2, and I get this. I did get a common denominator and got 2 minus square root of 3 over 4, and then I took the square root of the numerator, which gave me this, and the square root of the denominator, which gave me that, and then I stopped, okay? Um, I did not have to rationalize the denominator or anything like that. So that was as far as I would have been able to go with that problem. Okay, two more examples. So here we have this and they wanted us to solve the equation. So we had cosine of two theta plus six sine squared theta equal to four. The first thing you wanna do is try to get everything with just theta and not double or half angle theta. So the first thing I did was apply the, uh, one of the formulas for cosine of two theta. And then I noticed I have sine squared and sine squared. So I combined that negative one plus six is a positive five. And then I wanted this in terms of sine as well. Um, oh no, actually what I did was I noticed that if I split this, I could have one sine positive sine and then a positive four sine. And when I do that, the cosine squared 
theta plus the sine squared theta turns out to equal one, and then the four sine squared theta just comes down. The four on the other side has just been coming down the whole way. But now I'm gonna subtract one on both sides, so I get four sine squared theta equal to three. And then I'm gonna divide by four on both sides, so I get sine squared theta equals three fourths. Then I'm gonna take the square root, so I get plus or minus the square root of three fourths. Um, and then if I simplify that, the square root of the numerator, square root of three, square root of the denominator, square root of two. So where is the angle? Where is the sine of an angle equal to a positive square root of three over two? That would be the positive y value here and here, which are these two values, or the negative square root of three over two, which would be these negative y values, okay? And so then I have four possibilities. And since I'm only dealing with answers between zero and two pi, I don't have to do the plus two pi k because all adding two pi is gonna do is take me all the way around and back there again, right? And around and back there and around and back here and around and back here. So these are the four answers between zero and two pi. Now for number 15, it had that and it said find the zeros of the function. We'll know that zeros occur when the function equals zero. So that is when this expression equals zero. And so what I did was I applied the double angle there. It did have a negative, so I had to carry that down. And I applied um, the formula there. But I noticed that this term and this term had a sign in common. So I factored out that sign and I ended up with negative two cosine x plus one. And then I used my zero factor property and set this thing equal to zero, set that thing equal to zero. When does the sign x equal zero? So when is the y value zero? The y value is zero here and here, which happens at zero and pi, right? Or even two pi. But this one's not including 2 pi, which is why I did not include 2 pi here. And then over here, if I minus 1 on both sides, I get um, negative 2 cosine of x equal to negative uh, 1. And then if I divide both sides by negative 2, I get cosine of x equals positive 1 half. Um, and so then where is the x value positive 1 half? Well, the, well what angle is the cosine positive one half? Remember, cosine on the unit circle is the x value of the coordinates. So you're looking for the coordinates that have an x value of positive one half, and that happens at these two angles, which are pi over three and five pi over three. And so you have four answers, and you could include all of them in no particular order. I just went ahead and wrote them in order as they are around the unit circle from smallest to biggest, um, but you could have done zero pi, pi over three, five pi over three, or these two first, and then that one, those two. It doesn't matter the order as long as all of them are there. And that is the end of 8.6.